what's up what's happening everyone part of my presence youtube channel i'm going to play something for you this is a new story regarding a 24 year old single mother of three children one boy and two daughters and the fact that she was arrested because she went to work and left her children unattended now there's a lot to the story so let's start off with the actual video and then we're going to come back. But I want you to pay attention to the details because the devil is always in the details. Listen up. Down the street. But Bell ended up landing two misdemeanor charges of endangering children and spent the night in jail after her children's father called police. Although she says it's embarrassing, Bell isn't mad. I never set blame on anybody for anything. My kids, they, they bring me joy. They make me laugh. They're, they're my world. When you talk to Shayna Bell about her three children, Faith, Jay, Sean, and Jade, ages 9, 7, and 3, her face just lights up. I would never do anything to harm my kids. My kids are everything to me. That's all I do is go to work and take care of my kids. It was one week ago today, Bell was arrested at her job at Little Caesars, accused of leaving her daughters by themselves inside the Motel 6 hotel room where she's been living. I had to go to work. My daughter decided that she wanted to stay here. My daughter told me that this is where she wanted to be. And I felt that she was old enough to be able to sit here with her sister for a few hours. while, Because my job is right down the street. But Bell ended up landing two misdemeanor charges of endangering children and spent the night in jail Pay after attention. her children's father called police. Although she says it's embarrassing, Bell isn't mad at anyone. I never set blame on anybody for anything. Because at the end of the day, nobody left my kids in the hotel but me. I've cried a couple of times since this situation started. I'm just trying to keep a level head and trying to stay strong because that's all I can do. Her story gained a lot of attention from across the country, from both the haters and those who support the working mom of three. A lot of people are saying hurtful things, but a lot of people are also being there for me and showing like great support. Like, I have over $100,000 on a GoFundMe account right now. Like, mm. I didn't ask for that, but people gave it to me. And I'm just like, I'm overappreciative to what's going on. She said she's going to use that money to buy a house for her children to live in and everything they need. In Liberty Township, Nadine Grimley, WKBN 27 First News. So first of all, why is she at a Motel 6? Now, I understand that... People do live at hotels or motels, right? Whether it's permanently or temporarily until they get back on their feet. I understand that. There are people who actually live and they operate like they're paying rent at hotels and motels. So I'm not going to shame her for living in a hotel or motel. But it doesn't seem like this was a permanent thing for her. It seems like she fell into this position where she now has to pay this amount of money. But who knows? We don't know that story, right? But here's what we do know. There is a father, and that father seems to be involved. Why? Because, number one, he called the police. So, in other words, the father was well aware of what was going on and was concerned enough to make that call to say, hey, where are my children and why aren't they with you? And if they're not with you, why aren't they with me? So, this is an involved father because an involved father would make that call. Number two, an involved father would have custody rights. And this might be the reason why she, she made that comment saying, my daughter wanted to be with me. She's saying that because the daughter, the 10-year-old, and also the youngest one, the 2-year-old, was supposed to be with the father. And when the father didn't get... Again, maybe I'm making an assumption here, but I'm putting two and two together. When the father didn't get the pickup or the drop-off, right, the exchange between the, the kids and, and the parents, when he didn't get the exchange, he's like, yo, what's going on? And that's how he got into finding out what's going on. Oh, you're at work? Where are my kids? 911, right? Or... The Youngstown uh, uh, Police Department. Boom. Gets the police involved. The children are now given to him. Because he has legal authority. So I can't forget the son. Because I'm looking at the picture of all three of them. The son looks just like the rest of the children. So who knows? It's possible that they have the same father. 
And if you have the same father, and again, the son also looks around the same age as the oldest daughter. So the son might be maybe 9, 10, 11, but he's definitely not a teenager. And he's definitely not an adult. So the son needs to have supervision as well. So if they all have the same father, then even more reason for the father to say, hey, where are my other two children? I have my son, but where are my girls? I'm calling the police. Right? And explain to me what gives the mother the right to say who the child spends time with. And on top of that, it's not even like the daughter is spending time with the mother. The daughter is at home. If you want to call the Motel 6 home, the daughter is by herself. Spending time with no one. The mother should have told the daughter, the 10-year-old and the 2-year-old, hey, I don't care who you want to spend time with, but it's not going to be alone time. You got to go to your father. Spend time with him. Maybe when I'm done work, I'll speak to your father and arrange some type of exchange. And you can come back and spend time with me. That would have been the mature thing to do, the responsible thing to do. And who knows what type of communication those two have. Because I'll be honest, it does take crossing a certain line to call the police on, on, your, on the mother of your children. And it might have gone that way because there's a lack of communication. It might have gone that way because she refused to explain to him where his daughters were. It may have gotten to a situation because he's had many problems with responsibility and lack of communication. And he questions her parenting skills as to why it got to this point. He was probably told by his lawyer to pursue this in this way. So who knows? But a lot of things could happen when there's especially young parents and there's, there's custody battles and things happen. So you can kind of see where there's a breakdown here. So for all the people who are sympathetic and side with the mother and, and they say, well, the mother has to take care of her children and she's working, she's not going out clubbing, understand all of that and I agree. And it brings me to this question. Was this always the case? Was she always leaving her children alone at the house? And if that's the case, why doesn't she have some type of child care arrangements? Maybe she's alone. Maybe she has no one to turn to. Maybe she has no family members. And then I read this. She was released on bail the next day, and her story quickly went viral. Belle's mom, Danielle Hosey, launched a GoFundMe campaign after she started hearing that there were people in the community that would like to send assistance to her daughter and her children. The funds were earmarked for them alone. The original goal was 5000 Hosey wrote, This campaign was created to help Shayna and her children raise the money they need in order to secure permanent and safe housing. Everything raised will go directly to establishing a safe and permanent home for Shayna, Faith, Jason, and Jade. We understand that everyone has a story and we are grateful that you are listening to ours. Ours. Interesting choice of words. From the bottom of our hearts, we not only appreciate the financial contributions, but also the outpouring and support and the kind words and understanding. Now, it goes on to say that there were two large donations by a Cleveland Cavalier by the name of Javal McGee. He gave $5,000. And then another person, you probably know him, Pierre P. Thomas, co-founder of Quality Control Records. The same person that's responsible for pushing Cardi B and the City Girls and all that mess and the Migos. He gave $10,000. Okay, and then there's many people who donated $10, $5, group economics, the best thing possible to to. To, uh, to use an exercise. So that's great. And a lot of people were supporting her and saying that their moms also left them so they could go and work. And how it's not neglect because it's called a mother doing what she has to do. Now let's get back to the person by the name of Dan uh, Daniel Hosey. So you're going to tell me that this single mother of three who had to leave her two daughters, 10 years old and 2 years old, in the motel room while she goes and works at Little Caesars, 
for an evening shift has a mother and not just any mother a mother involved enough competent enough and resourceful enough to create a GoFundMe account in time, right? While things are viral and hot, striking while the pot is hot, or the iron is hot, or the kettle is hot, whatever the, the, the terminology is. She creates a GoFundMe account, and they get six figures and donations. And this is going to go towards a house. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, I'm a parent. I'm a parent. And for all those who are parents, if you need someone to watch your children, who is the first person you go to? The grandmother. Your mother. The child's grandmother. If not the grandmother, the grandfather. But hold on. She's not by herself. She has a mother. And a mother that seems to know her entire situation. So why couldn't the mother watch the two children? But better yet, here's a better question. Why isn't she living with the mother? As a parent, imagine my son. Imagine my kids. In their 20s, they have a child and they can afford a proper place to stay. And I'm going to be on the sidelines? Hey, son, how's everything going? Everything's good in the Motel 6? Do you want me to check on, on your two kids? My grandsons or my granddaughters. Do you want me to check on them and make sure they're okay in the hotel room by themselves? Who does that? In the right mind, what grandparent would do that? What would be the natural thing for that grandparent to do? You don't got to work at Little Caesars. Come home, live with me, and we will do this together. You can go back to school if you want. You stay under my roof. You pay me something. You'll pay me. You're not going to be living here for free, but you'll pay me. But at least my grandchildren, your children, will be under one roof, and everything will be fine. And if I can't take care of your children... They want to make sure that the father is going to be taking care of the children. Because the father must be involved. And guess what? It seems like he already is. So this single mother of three, 24 years old, doesn't lack any support. Because believe you me, if she had parents that were not in her life, life, she wouldn't allow them to create a GoFundMe account for her. Would you let your parent who left you out to dry in a Motel 6 create a GoFundMe on your behalf? Hell no. So they raised six figures, right? To get the exact amount, $165,639 is what they raised. And according to the mother, not the single mother, but the mother of the single mother, the grandparent of the three children, she says that they're going to use that money and they're going to buy a house. And apparently they showed the picture of her purchasing the house. So it's been confirmed. She has a house. Great news. Now on top of this, they closed off the GoFundMe account. However, they didn't forget to add in a note to say, hey, there's a cash app. Dollar sign to Danny Patrice. So there's a cash app if you still want to give donations. Because it's all about donations. Donations, donations, gifts and gifts. So it's all that stuff. They're going to get everything. And why not? Why not strike while the iron is hot, right? So they're not leaving any stone unturned. And I guess why not take advantage of this promotion and this new story that they put out there? But let me ask you guys. Whether or, not, whether or not they live in the Motel 6 or they live in a 10-room mansion. After all that's been said and done, have they resolved the child care issue? 
ask yourself. She would still have to work, probably work more now than ever before, now that she has a mortgage to pay. So she would still have to work, wouldn't she? And probably longer hours, which means she'll be away from her children a lot longer. And I don't know about you, but in the motel, there's only one way in, one way out. The children were probably more secure in the motel room because you have some security and some people in the hotel room that can kind of watch and monitor things and maybe call the police on people's behalf if there is someone who's breaking in or someone's hurt. And they have alarms and whatnot. But now you're going to a house, a house probably on your own, with multiple doors and ways of entry. And you think that buying the house has now placed this single mother of three in a better position? Actually, if you just look at the details on paper, no, the children are worse off. They're living in a better place. But as far as the security of it all, the danger of it all, they're in more danger now. Especially if you bought a fancy house because people do break-ins in upscale neighborhoods, right? Again, maybe I'm nitpicking, but the point I'm making here is that she has all this money. She bought her brand new house, which is going to mean she has to work more. But did she ever say, hey... With this money, I'm going to use to buy the services of a babysitter. Or is her mother now going to move into this house? And if that's the case, shame on the mother. Because the mother should have told the daughter, come move into my house. So you see there's a lot of issues with this story, a lot of holes. Whenever you get these news stories that, you know, uh, pull on people's heartstrings, you have to ask yourself, what is the purpose of the story? What are the details? Do they give the complete picture? Most times they don't. And they're usually angling it in a way to promote certain things. And one of the things that they're promoting in this story is this. They're promoting victimhood. Because here's a mother who should have known better to tap into her resources, her mother, the children's grandmother, to give the children to her. For the grandmother to step up and to act like a grandmother and provide childcare for your daughter or provide a roof in which your daughter and your grandkids can live under. It also negates the fact that the son just disappeared in all of this. And it also negates the fact that the father of at least two of the children, possibly all three, is an involved father. And probably only called the cops because his children are supposed to be with him. And he is a concerned father. But they don't go into those aspects of this story because the purpose is to get people to feel sorry for this woman who made these decisions on her own. A woman who made these decisions despite all the resources that she had. So I mention all of this to say, keep in mind what the media the news stations, what they're doing, and how they influence people to think. And how they try to make this seem like this is something that is normal. This is something that is a functional way of living and operating in one's household, of raising a family. No, it's not. That mother and that father should be living under one household and try to work things out. And try to boost up their family out of what I guess you could call poverty and make a way for themselves. But instead, they've gone to the quick fix, which is a GoFundMe account. And you can only get sympathy through a news story that pushes that agenda, 
in order for people to want to donate. And this is where you have instances like the Gorilla Girl. This is where you have instances of uh, situations where someone is killed by a police, a police officer, or if someone loses a job, or, or whatever the case may be. There's always spin on it to make sure that your heart and your dollars go towards this particular charity case, victimhood. And while all that, yes, I understand is necessary and it's profitable and it makes sense, strike while you're hot. But do people understand that your stories, your image, your dysfunction, your circumstances are being exploited? And the sad part about all of this is that I believe that these people who are participating in this, they're fully aware. And they know the stakes. They know the deal. And they agree to it. And by agreeing to it, guess what happens? You're actually inspiring others to follow in that footsteps. What can I do to get my GoFundMe account popping? How many people spray Gorilla Glue in their hair after they saw what that woman got from a GoFundMe account? How many? Again, I know a lot of people want to say you're responsible for your own actions, and absolutely you are. But when you have these stories being pushed with these narratives, with incomplete stories, it's done for a purpose, and it's done... To influence the way people think. And that should be a concern for everyone. Until next time. Part of my presence. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.